All right, hello to all my stallion families out there. This week I'm really excited about the project that we're doing. We are doing this picture of row houses, meaning these are houses that are all in a row. And it is a take on a famous row of houses that is in Charleston, South Carolina. And they are called the Rainbow Row because the houses in that row or on that street are so bright and colorful. They call it the Rainbow Row because of all the colors. So we're not making it look exactly like that row of houses, but we're doing a take on it, which means we're getting our ideas and our inspiration from it. Okay, um, you're gonna need paper, pencil, markers, crayons, and maybe Sharpies, depending on if you have them. And I'm also gonna show you a few pictures of the real Rainbow Row before we get started. So you can hit pause, get your supplies together, and we'll meet back here. All right, so this is what's known as Rainbow Row. It is in Charleston, South Carolina. And these are houses that are in a row right next to each other. And they are really bright and colorful. Like you can see this one's green, this one's a lavender. Um, here you don't see quite with the brick and the brown, that was not quite as colorful, but if you look down there, you can see. And so these are known as, it is known as Rainbow Row because they are really bright and colorful like a rainbow. Now it's not a Roy G. Bibb rainbow. They're not in red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet order, but they are colorful. And this is kind of a take on this part of the street right here is a take on the picture that we are making. Um, we're even making that green building there and, um, and just in similar buildings. We're not trying to be perfect and make it exactly like the real Rainbow Row, but it is a take on it, which means it's similar to it. And um, you will get to choose the colors that you make your building. They do not have to be like they are in real life. There you can see it is on the water. And in the video, we talk about how these shutters are so that they can protect their windows if there's a hurricane or a really bad storm. So it's really neat. I didn't even know this row of houses existed until I started um, researching something that I wanted to draw with you guys. And that's when I found this. I actually found the drawing first and then started reading on what it was a drawing of and I fell in love with it. In fact, I wanna go here in real life now. So um, get your stuff together and we will get right to work. So we, starting out with our picture, we are going to fold it in half twice. I'm going to fold it in half like I'm making it a book. Okay, make a good crease. And then I'm going to fold it in half one more time. And the reason we do this is because when we unfold it and spread it out, you can see the middle going up and down, and you can see the middle going side to side. And that way, it helps you know where to put it on the paper, and it helps you know how big to make it on the paper. So it actually helps you quite a bit. So first we're gonna start off with our horizon line. And so I've got my middle line going up and down here. I'm going to be, if I find from just this bottom half, if I find the halfway point that's right about there, and I'm going to go down about to the halfway, if I go from here to the bottom of the paper, the halfway point there, all right? And that is where my horizon line is gonna be. And I'm just gonna make it go straight across. All right, and notice I didn't try to use a ruler or anything. I'm not trying to be perfect. But remember the old saying, draw light until you know you have it right. Because it is really hard to erase dark pencil. Okay, and I'm gonna start with my first building. My first building is going to be about half of this left-handed side. So it'll be about, it's a little less than half, so it'll be about that big, okay? And notice how I made a little mark so I can kind of see how far I want it to come over. All right, and I'm gonna practice with my finger first. It's gonna be about, gonna be a little bit past the halfway point 
it's going to have just a little bit of a pointed roof. So I'll have a little bit of a pointed roof and that's line that goes straight down. Okay, so I'm going to start with that line first. Okay, and then find the halfway point and make the two lines for my roof. Okay, now I go to the building next door. This building is about the same width here, meaning side to side. And I'm going to go straight across. And again, notice how I'm drawing really light. And then I'm going to come straight down. Okay. All right. Then I'm going to, this is the building that's kind of in the middle of the paper. First, I'm going to draw the other side of the building. I'm going to make it just a little wider than the other ones. So again, I made a little mark here and I'm bringing the line straight down. Okay. And then this one has a special roof. First of all, it's a little taller than the other two buildings. So I'm making the lines a little longer and it goes up kind of like stair steps. It comes in and then up and then in again. And then it has a curved line that connects it, kind of similar to the Alamo. And now that I have that, I'm realizing this one is a little too high, so I'm going to try to fix that. Okay, and so there's building number three. All right, and then the next one, this one's going to be a skinnier building. So I'm going to make the line for how far I want it to go over, and I'm going to make the line go straight down. Okay, and then the roof on this one is just a straight roof. It's a little shorter than this point of this building, and it's going to come straight across. And then the building next door to this one, it's wider, but it's the same height. Okay, and then it has a little sure what we would call that but it's like a rectangle basically almost like that has a stripe at the top of the building or something all right and there are our basic shapes for our one two three four five buildings okay so next we are going to work on adding some details to this with windows and doors and clouds and stuff like that all right so we're going to start with our doors on um, this building, the first building that we did, I'm going to make two doors. And all of our doors on all of our buildings are going to be an arch. So like around here, most homes and buildings have a doors that are the shape of a rectangle. But in some areas, you have an archway door, which is this. That's where the top is curved. And remember, this lesson is about unity, meaning things go together and belong together. And so part of what's going to give our five buildings unity are the arched doorways. So it is important that you, you don't change that. Like, for example, if you do change a door to a rectangle, change all of them to a rectangle. And then that way you still have your unity. All right, so this one only has one. Notice it's over to the side. Same situation with this one. Notice they're close to the same height and width. All right. Um, this one, we're not going to put a door on. This one's just going to have windows. This one, it's going to have two again, but one's going to be a little wider and one's going to be a little more narrow. Maybe that's an employee entrance or something. way to get back in the alley or something who knows all right so there I have my doorways I have one two three four five six doorways next I'm gonna work on the roof a little bit on this one I'm gonna basically kind of almost frame it out I'm making what I call copycat line here that copies the top line and then this one has a little vent here 
All right, it's kind of like where if it's an attic space or something, it can let all that hot air out. This one is going to have a triangle roof that I add on top of it. Okay, notice it's a little more steep or pitched than this one. That means it comes up a little higher and it's a little, um, it's more of an angle. And then I have the little window that pops up here. I want to say those are called a dormer window, but I'm not positive about that. I'd have to look that up. Or maybe perhaps that's something you could look up and get back to me on. And I'm making a little window here. All right. I love it so far. This one we're going to leave alone because the shape alone makes it interesting. And then we're going to add a little chimney here. All right, I'm going to race where the line goes through it. And then I'm going to make another one over here. And notice how I tried to make it a little three dimensional. This one I have to fix that a little bit. All right, so notice it's like a square that's kind of at an angle. And then from this corner and this corner and this corner, you have lines that come down. That's how you can make it look three dimensional like a rectangular prism. All right, and then up in the sky, I'm gonna just add a couple of clouds. Nothing too complicated or crazy. Don't go too nuts with the clouds because the picture is not about the clouds, it's about our buildings here. All right, and next we're going to make our windows. Okay, so for our windows on this one, I'm gonna have one, I'm gonna put one in the middle first, so I can center it, two, three, and these are just little square windows. And notice I'm not using a ruler or anything. I'm not trying to make it perfect. I'm trying to do my best, but I'm not trying to be perfect either. There's a, there is a difference between doing your best and trying to be perfect. When I was your age and I was in art, I was really bad about trying to make everything perfect. And when it couldn't be perfect, I got really mad and I threw all my art away every time. And my poor mom would have to go and pull it out of the trash and hide it from me. I found out years later that my mom had all of that art that she saved. All right, so there I've got my six windows, three squares, three rectangles. And then next door, this one's gonna have two kind of rectangles, but not too terribly big. All right, and then I'm going to make what's called a shutter on each side. These are things, um, usually in this part of the country here in Texas, shutters are just for decoration, just to look nice. But in other areas, like say New Orleans and Galveston, anywhere on the coast, the shutters are so they can close them and protect their windows from breaking if there's a hurricane or something. So if you think about it, that's really pretty smart. And then I guess people just like the looks of it. So here in Texas, like when I had my house, it, it had fake shutters <laughs> and looked like shutters, but you couldn't close them or anything. Of course here in Texas, there's not a lot of reason to. All right, and then I'm gonna make the little lines on my window. And then, now notice this window's a little smaller than this one. I'm not gonna get stressed about that. And I'm gonna make another window here on the ground floor. Maybe this is their living room or something. All right. So there are the windows for building number two. Now on this one, I'm going to do four rows of windows. I'm going to have the top row of windows. Okay. 
and then the next row of windows. And again, I'm not trying to be perfect. And then the next row of windows. And notice they get a little longer, not too terribly much. And then kind of like the um, this house, I'm gonna have one window on the ground floor. And then I am going to make shutters. If you hear that scratching sound, that is the sound of the kids standing in line for lunch. And when they drag their hands and different things along the wall, <laughs> Ms. Thompson gets to hear that lovely sound. Yep. <laughs> you can also, I'm not sure how well the mic is picking up the sounds, but you can hear them talking in there as well. Every school I've worked at, I've been next door to the cafeteria. All right, so I'm just finishing up my shutters. Now notice how I'm just kind of doing it loose and carefree. Again, I'm not trying to make it perfect. Now on this building, this one's skinnier, so I'm just gonna have three windows. I'm gonna have a square window. I'm gonna have a longer rectangle window. And then I'm gonna have one more window on the ground floor. And I guess the door for this building is on the other side or something. All right, and again, shutters. This is actually coming from, at the beginning of the video, I should have explained to you about how um, this is a row of houses in um, Charleston, and um, which is South Carolina, I believe. And um, it's called the Rainbow Row or the Rainbow Houses. And these are real houses that are these bright, beautiful colors. And um, people go when they go there to visit them. I have never been to Charleston, so I've never been able to see them in person. Maybe someday. But at the beginning of the video, I should have talked to you about it a little bit and showed you a video. If for some reason you fast forward it, you might want to go back and see that if you're curious about them. All right, and I'm almost done with my last set of shutters. All right. So now, and then this is just the street here in front of us. We'll probably color that gray and stuff, all right? So now I am ready to do some outlining. Okay, so I have my handy dandy Sharpie and I'm going to trace over all of my pencil. If you do not have a Sharpie, you can use a black crayon. You can use a black Crayola marker or any other brand. You could also use a black pen. If you don't have any of those things, you could just press down a little harder with your pencil to make it a little more bold. But I think out of all those options, most of you should have something you can use. Now, as always, if you're using a Sharpie, Put something under your paper to protect your desk or your counter or your table, depending on where you are working. Like on mine, my desk is basically made out of a countertop, but to protect it, I have this piece of green poster board I keep here. And you can see all the places where the Sharpie has gone through or come off that page. And especially those of you that are at home, you have very nice homes and very nice apartments. You don't want to ruin your countertop or your furniture by getting Sharpie on it. So please do what you need to do to protect it. And also we don't want any upset parents. Happy parents or fun parents. <laughs> when my kids are little, they used to always say, when mommy's happy, everybody's happy. One of the benefits of being the only female in the house, <laughs> which I still am, by the way, but both of my boys are in college now. They're really big and really smart. 
they did both did really good in school and they both got scholarships um, you probably don't know what a scholarship is but a scholarship is when someone else is so impressed with you they're willing to pay for your school for you and college is super duper expensive so that was a major blessing for our family all right now I am going to fast forward to finish the Sharpie so you don't have to watch the Miss Thompson show <laughs> if you're still doing your Sharpie and you probably are um, you can of course hit pause and then when we are both done with our Sharpie we will meet back here all right so I finished outlining with my Sharpie and now I'm going to take my eraser and I'm going to erase any pencil I can still see um, quite a few places um, if you have a handheld eraser like this I highly recommend it if you don't it's not the end of the world you can always use the one on the end of your pencil but if you ever have a chance to get a pink pearl or a white pearl this one's a white pearl so it's called white this one's a pink pearl it's pink um, pink pearl erasers are good but my personal favorite is still the white pearl but they are both good I feel like the reason I like the white pearl better it has nothing to do with the color it has to do with that I feel like it erases a little cleaner and I guess it does somewhat have to do with the color because of it being white and typically your papers white it doesn't leave any of those little marks sometimes an eraser can leave those little pink kind of almost like a skid mark on it you typically don't want that but and um, that really is usually if it's like a off-brand you know the store brand or something or a real cheap one all right so there are my rainbow row of houses and now I am ready to start coloring now I am personally going to do a combination of markers and crayons my brain stopped working for a second there so um now remember the houses in charleston are actually pastel colors okay um it's like a i was looking online this one looks kind of like a brownish red almost a pink kind of yellow green I'm trying to remember blue and I can't remember what that one is um, but you do not have to make them the colors they are in real life you can do any color you want I'm going to make this guy purple I'm gonna make this guy green I'm gonna make this guy yellow orange and blue okay and what I'm gonna do is I am going to do markers in some of the smaller areas so for example on my orange building I'm going to use the orange marker for the shutters and then on all of my windows because you know you we're pretending that the lights are on I'm going to use yellow I'll have to do something different on my yellow house maybe I'll use a color besides yellow and then I can do my roof brown all right and my chimney all right and then inside the chimney I'm gonna make it black All right, then for the rest of my building, I am going to color it with a crayon. So I did all the smaller little kind of accent type things with markers and I'm doing the rest of the building with my crayon. So that way I have a variety of textures. A texture is either how something feels or how it looks like it would feel. And notice I'm coloring one direction I'm trying my best to color neat and to color nicely and to stay within the lines 
All right, so there's building number one. So I'm going to do the same sort of thing with the rest of my buildings. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward. Um, you can see how mine turns out if you'd like, and then hit pause and color yours. Okay, so I'm not completely finished coloring my picture, but I wanted to show you what I'm going to do for the road. Um, this is right here. So what I'm going to do first is I've got a gray marker, and I'm going to color the road gray with my gray marker. If you don't have a gray marker, you could use a gray crayon. But gray does come in most of the sets of markers. And you probably don't use it too much unless you draw a bunch of elephants or hippos in your spare time. All right, so I'm going to fast forward to being finished with this gray marker, and then I'll show you what I'm going to do next. So if you choose to do this, um, I've colored it with my gray marker, and I for the most part, let it dry. Um, don't try to color crayon over this if the marker's still wet. And I've got my white, and I'm gonna just kinda go over it a little bit with my white. I'm not trying to color it solid. I'm just trying to give it that one. It may be hard to tell on the camera, but in real life, you can just kind of see the light markings that the white makes. It just kinda helps give it a texture and a look. I notice that with all of it, I'm coloring side to side because that's kind of the direction the texture of the cement would go. And now I'm switching to a gray. It's probably my gray, so light. It's probably not going to look really much different than the white, and that's okay. And again, you pr it's probably not coming off on the camera at all. But in real life, you can see just a little bit of a texture. It's nothing drastic or dramatic. Then I have my black crayon. Now I'm just kind of making a few strokes left and right and here and there. And now you should be able to kind of see the texture coming in. And it just helps give it the illusion a little bit that it is, you know, cement on a road. And you have a little bit of that texture. And again, you don't have to do this. I just wanted you to know it's an option that it's there. All right, and there are my rainbow row of houses. Turned out really cute. And just like I say at the end of every video, if you want to send me a picture of your art, please do. I will put it in the virtual art show. And um, you can take a picture with an, a phone or an iPad or a tablet and then fill out that Google form and send it to me, or you can email it to me. Um, if you're going to school here in person, you actually come into the building. Uh, you can always just bring it with you when you have art with me, and I will take a picture of it with my phone and upload it for you. So you do have a few different options, okay? So thank you so much. I enjoyed drawing with you today, and have a great week.